Welcome everyone. I put together a wall class for you guys. All you need is your mat and a wall. It's a very gentle class, so it's great if you've been out of your practice for a while. It's great if you only have 20 or 30 minutes, and it's great if you don't have all your props with you. So we're gonna start with a wall child's pose, which is a great way to do child's pose standing up. You're gonna face the wall, and you're going to lean into the wall just slightly so you can see my body's at an angle. Keep your feet hip distance apart. You can cross your arms, use your arms as uh, forehead support, and rest your forehead against your forearms. Very gentle tuck of the tailbone. Should feel like you're in a gentle plank position. I'm taking this pose for a minute or two to settle the nerves, to quiet the mind, to prepare for your practice. Slow and steady breathing. Just sensing into the body sensing all the various parts of your body, the shoulders, backs of your legs, the feet. The abdomen, the skin of the face, the back, With the next three exhalations, follow those breaths out till the very end. Continuing to keep the tension in the body, in the sensory experience of the body. We'll start to gently lift the head. Bring yourself back up to an upright position. And we're going to go through the six actions of the spine at the wall. So the first two actions being the twisting actions. So with an upright standing position, extend your arms so that the, the elbows are slightly softened. And you're gonna pivot with your feet turning out. Start by turning out or walking out to the left side. And you're gently steering your torso and the rib cage to the left. Think about your hips as Headlights on the same plane, stabilizing the lower abdominals, hopefully to mobilize the upper spine. And every time you exhale, there's an opportunity to just take it a bit farther. We're going to add a lateral movement to this. We get those second two actions of the spine involved as well. You're going to step your left hand up the wall and lengthen toward the wall through the crown of the head, envisioning your spine in a crescent moon shape. The right arm is passive, elbow is very soft, very bent. Envisioning the left side of the body opening while maintaining some length to the right side of the body. Bring the feet evenly connecting with the floor. Coming right up to the edge of physical sensation, applying the deeper breaths. And now you're gently gonna move the left hand back down the wall. You're gonna gently turn out of the twist. And now moving to the other side, you're gonna pivot over to the right. Your hands can be parallel, your elbows are soft, and you're revolving the torso to the right. 
you should feel the left side ribs coming around, the right side ribs rolling back, stabilizing the pelvis by gently gripping the lower abdominals. And every exhale, coaxing the spine and the rib cage a bit farther into the twist. Now you're gonna go ahead and step the right hand up the wall and lengthen in a sideways direction toward the wall. So you're opening the right side body. Five deep breaths. Go ahead and inhale the hand back down the wall, gently rotate out of the twist, step back to facing the wall, and release your hands. Come into a back bend next. You're going to turn around away from the wall, about a footprint or a footprint and a half up to two footprints in front of the wall. You're going to raise the arms, extend up through the fingertips, and lengthen the index fingers back to the wall. And once you make contact there, you have nice resistance to push into the wall to help move the tailbone in, help adjust the pelvis into a posterior tilt. Firm your legs, extend up through the crown of the head, but keep your gaze soft. Maybe compact the front rib cage to the midline to support your back body. On an inhale, lengthen up and out of the standing back bend. Release your arms. Turn back to the wall. We're going to come into a downward dog wall version. So you're going to hold yourself into a 90 degree angle. The idea here is to keep your legs vertical and your torso and arms level with the floor. If you have wrist issues, you can tent the fingers, you can take knuckles or fists to the wall. Otherwise, keep the hands flat against the wall. Keep your hands level with each other and level with the shoulders. Draw your hips away from the wall and scoop the belly toward the back so that we don't collapse because of gravity. So meet the effects of gravity Gently moving the front ribs to midline. Gently scooping the navel toward the back. Extending the legs as fully as you can, which might not be perfectly straight yet. That will come with time. Rolling the inner knees and the inner thighs back. You can let your head simply relax toward the floor. Five more breaths. Slowly inhale and look to the wall. Start to move yourself up and out of that wall, downward facing dog. Now that we're through the six actions, we're going to come into a standing mountain Tadasana. So I'm going to turn to the side here. At Attempted to put my shoulders in line with my hips, my hips in line with my heels. A great way to do this is to actually move directly to the wall. Your heels don't come to the wall because we usually have more of our body behind the heels, such as our buttocks. But what you do wanna to try to attempt to do is get the shoulders to touch. Maybe the back of the head a little bit. Not if it distorts your pose, but use the wall to help you line yourself up. Adjust the skull so you sense it's right above the spine. Relax the feet, soften the feet. Try to sense that you have energy flowing in two directions, down through the feet, up through the crown of the head. Relax the shoulders. Sensing a lightness starting to form in the body, 
as if the whole pelvis is floating a bit higher from the floor. The rib cage rises slightly, the skull gently lifts a little bit more. Keeping a soft downward gaze and continuing to sense that you're becoming both very grounded and also very light. Go ahead and release the pose, shake the limbs if you need to, setting them off duty for a moment. We're going to come into a half version of Parjvottanasana. This is the intense side stretching pose. So you'll take your right foot almost to the wall. Don't have it jamming into the wall. Your left foot is stepped back and your feet are opened up as wide as your hips. So you are not on the balance beam. You have hip width clearance between the feet. The first version is gonna be bending forward. So you can see my torso is not completely level with the floor. My arms are crossed and again, my head gets to rest on the arms. So this version I find I have more sensation going on in the back leg. It might be different for you, but see what you feel. Keep your legs firm and beware of hyperextension in the knees. If you sense that you might be locking out or popping the knee back, keep a micro bend and squeeze the quadriceps. Slowly lift your head. Use the wall for support to help you come out of it. And switch to the left foot being the forward foot. The back foot should have a slight turnout. Front foot is directly pointed at the wall. And again, you're gonna lengthen forward, adjusting the pelvic tilt to a forward tilt. coming right up to the edge of sensation and feeding it your breath. support to come out. Go ahead and bring your right foot back to the wall. Your left foot steps back, but now we need to move a little bit farther to the wall, away from the wall, because we're going to try a full arm extension version of the same pose. So you will need to step back to allow the arms to fully extend. You're going to gently push into the wall through the hands, lengthen the hips back, and now maybe see if you feel a little bit more of the stretch in this version happening in the right hamstring, so in the front leg. Slow, deep breaths. Take a look forward, step into the front foot, step that back foot forward, switch out the legs. You shouldn't have to move your arms. Do your best to align your hips so they're on an even plane and start to move into your edge on the left side. Last two breaths. 
Nice and slow, nice and steady. On the inhale, look to the wall, step into the left foot, step your right foot forward, and go ahead and you can turn to face the right end of your mat. We're gonna take the right foot to the wall. We're gonna come into a triangle pose. So here we do want to have the feet on the same line. So your right heel, which is to the wall, if you drew a line, it should bump into the arch of the left foot. We're gonna come into a really gentle version of triangle pose. So I'm gonna place my right hand against the wall. I'm gonna tilt the pelvis so that I'm dropping the right pelvis down, lifting the left pelvis and hip. And I'm just using the wall for support. And the wall is a really nice tool here because you can help your torso gently steer it back because our torsos tend to kind of lurch over the floor. And so you're attempting to put your torso in the line that you've established between your feet. It will feel a little unsteady and awkward, but hopefully the wall gives you a sense of support so you can feel the good alignment and make that imprint on your body. You can see my left hand's on my hip. You may feel like stacking that arm. I find it's a little more beneficial for the feeling of my pose to keep it on my hip. So you have to make that decision for yourself. Again, be aware of hyperextending the knees or flaccid knees. So keep the quadriceps firm on that right leg. Extend your right toes toward the wall. And step into the outer edge of your left foot. Just three more breaths. Inhale, you're gonna lengthen up through the top of the head. You can turn those right toes forward and walk yourself in with heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes. And you're gonna be setting up left side. So left foot is your kind of to the wall foot. Your right foot steps back. You're already adjusting the pelvic tilt. You're gonna rest your left hand on the wall. Try to see that your hand follows that line that your legs have established. Right hand on the hip. Five breaths. Good. Go ahead and inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head, and turn the left toes forward. Go ahead and walk it in. Right. So I just have two more poses for you. The last thing we're going to do is a warrior two. So the way we're going to get into it is a little involved. What I want you to do is step your right foot to the wall, but not exactly on the wall. Come into your warrior two position. So your kind of your ideal 90 degree knee angle, your knee right over the ankle. And I want you to find the position on your mat where you're in that warrior two position and your fingertips graze the wall. You're not jamming into it. You're not reaching far for the wall. You have the measurement kind of perfectly set up there. Okay, so we're gonna do five exhales. And that fifth exhale, you're gonna land back here right where you are. And that's where the magic begins. So inhale and straighten, your hands should come away from the wall. Exhale, fingertips to the wall, you know you have your nice deep warrior two. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. This next one, you're going to land. Inhale. And when you come back down to the exhale, I want you to get more contact with your hand into the wall. Don't worry if your torso is leaning a little bit. That's okay for what we're doing here. 
press your right knee toward the small toe and take your hips any amount deeper. Because you have the wall, you should be able to find a little more depth here today. Keep breathing. Hopefully you find a little softness in your foot, in your hip, in your hip joint. Stay with it. It is still a lot of sensation. Inhale, press the wall away, straighten the leg, pivot the right toes forward and heel toe, walk it back in. Okay, so we'll do the left side. You have to find that same perfect measurement. Left heel aligns with the right arch of your foot if you drew a line. You're in your deepest warrior two and finding the distance from the wall where your longest finger touches the wall. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Keep the knee tracking with the toes. Don't let it wander around like it tries to do. Two more. Exhale. Inhale. And this next one, you're going to hold it. Press your hand into the wall. You might need to make a fist. Get good contact. Push. Use that point of contact to relieve pressure in other areas, such as the hips, the feet. Go deeper. Take the hips closer to the floor. Be in your square. Three more breaths. Keep pressing the left knee toward the small toe side of the foot. Last exhale. Inhale, straighten. Turn the left toes forward. Walk it back in. Good. Good work. Last but not least, we're going to fold forward. Toward the wall. This is a little strange, but you can use the wall to make you feel a little bit more contained and compact. So as you fold forward, let your head find a wall. You might be able to help your feet walk in a little bit more. And you'll find your perfect distance. Let your arms dangle. And just imagine your skull and the brain floating inside the skull, the brain resting there, bathing in those healthy juices. Feel the torso and skull cascading toward the floor. And notice how the position is beneficial to exhale extension. Let your exhales drain from your body. Bend your knees. Try to come up with firm abdominals. And from here, I'm going to have you invite you to lie down on your back. Be intuitive about what your body is asking for. You might want to do a reclining child's pose, a bridge pose, some knee circles. You might want to do a child's pose on your mat. And then make sure you take Shavasana. So Shavasana is really important. It's the pose of integration. So we take the benefits of our practice that we absorb through the physical body. And in Shavasana, we let all of that messaging of the body have a conversation with the brain. And so the steadiness we learn on our feet can transfer to steadiness in the mind. I hope to see you all again very soon. Namaste. Mm -hmm.